Go get him, Tiger. Hello, how is everyone doing today? How is everyone doing today? <laughs> Isn't that magical where I can ask the question twice and you get louder, right? I'm just kidding, I hate it. <laughs> I mean, we've all had that before. Funnily enough, though, the only question I hate getting more than the dreaded, so Damon, what are you going to do with your philosophy degree, is the how are you question. I mean, think about it. How many times a day are we asked this question? One, two, three dozens of times, right? And even more interestingly is that this question is being asked by everyone and, importantly, everything, right? So friends, family, strangers, and even Facebook has started asking me the question before I post statuses. So here I am trying to post my, uh, which one was this? Eighth status of the day. And I am thrown into a seemingly existential crisis. I mean, seriously, sounds silly, but the question, how are you, has real impact on how we think of ourselves. Think about what is the last time we've actually taken this question seriously? You don't go to a psychology professional or a therapist. It's probably been quite a while. So that's why I'm here today. I want to talk to you all about how asking and answering the question, how are you, can impact not only our thinking of ourselves, but it also offers somebody else and ourselves the ability to distort the reality of our mental health and well-being. So I've broken this problem up into three components. And the first thing I want to talk to you all today about is what I call the problem of the asker. So askers of the question, how are you, tend to be uh, pretty ingenuine, right? I mean, you can think about how many times I get asked this question a day. If I had a, a dime for every time I was asked the question, well, I probably wouldn't need to be justifying my philosophy degree to anybody, right? Um, and so, so it has real impact. And, and can you imagine, like, every time getting asked the question, how are you, to, to have to disclose your, your entire box of feelings for the day, right? I mean, try making friends that way. It's not going to work. I'm going to show you that. And so this has real impact on how we're thinking of ourselves, right? And, but also how we're interacting with others. So what we're doing is we're creating a mutual understanding between that person and person that the answer should be no more than one or two words, which creates ingenuine conversation. So who's ever been asked, how are you, by someone you've never met before, right? Probably almost everyone. I mean, seriously, imagine telling them an hour of a story, how am I doing? Like, that's a huge question, right? So what this does, what the understanding that the answer should be no more than one or two words forces the answer into a position of lying. So think about how I started the talk, right? How are you? No, how are you, right? I mean, I got you excited to lie. <laughs> like, what is that, right? So there's real impact here. And think about this, too. Like, lying to ourselves has real implications. So think about the example of, like, someone losing weight, right? So, so what happens? That person normally has a very hard time telling they've lost weight. This is because the brain takes into account the small changes that we see on a daily basis and forms a new self-image. Similarly, in the situation of lying to ourselves, our brain takes into account our lies and thinks differently of how we feel, right? So we're thinking how we're feeling. But what is not happening is that we're changing the way in which we feel. So what this does is it creates this severe form of cognitive dissonance between how we think that we feel and what we're actually feeling, right? But the problem doesn't stop with just the asker. 
So answers of the question, how are you, also tend to be pretty ingenuine. Think of how we normally respond to the question, how are you, right? I'm fine, and you? What does that offer us? Zero insight. But a convincing 100% deflection rate, right? <laughs> but what does this do? Well, it's creating this weird sort of misunderstanding between that person and the person. So what the question is meaning, right? I mean, imagine if I were to respond, how are you? And I say, hmm, well, you know, I'm doing pretty well, actually. Uh, I had a really great day. An amazing lunch. Um, oh, but let me, let me tell you what Rebecca said. What would you do? You would probably be several hundred feet in front of me because, let's face it, you probably didn't care to hear my answer. And if you happen to stay around, you would probably have a, can this hurry up, face, right? So what's happening then is that answer, again, is forced into a position of lying. Forced into a position of repeating the practice of not understanding themselves. But the problem doesn't stop here with the answer. So let's think of another way in which we answer the question, how are you? Fine. So here's a challenge for you. Next time someone gives you the answer, fine. Follow up with them. Ask them, hmm, OK. Why are you doing fine today? Get ready for some confusion and uh, maybe a little bit of anger, right? But Justifiably so. See, the thing is, fine is not an emotion, right? So, so getting someone to explain, like, why are you feeling fine, is a seemingly impossible task. And insert any adjective. Good, bad, blue, yellow, right? Silly when we think about it that way. So what this does is the creation of this new weird emotion, new weird word and response is widening that gap, again, between how we think that we feel and how we actually feel. So we've talked about the problem of the asker, talked about the problem of the answer, but maybe we can prob problematize one more thing. Right? Maybe there's something else. Maybe we can talk about the problem of the question. So maybe the question is just a bad question, right? So. Here's a task for you. Fun little game, fun little activity. When you leave, after the talk, or since we all have smartphones, now if you want, Google search how are you responses. There, you can find 101 creative ways to answer the question, how are you? And if you're really curious how to kill the job interview by nailing the question, how are you? Which the answer is perfect, so start using that, <laughs> apparently, right? But, but what does this tell us, right? If neither the asker nor the answer, and apparently nobody, since Google's trying to ask this question, knows how to answer the question, how are you, then why are we asked this question so many times a day, right? I mean, would we answer and engage in conversation in a similar fashion with any other question? Think about this. What do you do for a living? Oh, I'm a doctor, and do you? I mean, I wish I could be a doctor, and I think some of us wish that we could be doctors, and some of us are doctors. But the majority of us would be lying, right? And we can laugh, and we can be like, oh, that's funny. So if we can do that with something as extraneous and as small and as a profession, why are we so readily available to lie about something as integral as mental health and well-being? We should probably do something about this. Now, what I want to argue to you is not that fixing the problem of this huge dissonance is going to be easy by any means, right? But I do want to argue to you that starting to make small steps towards changing the problem and fixing the problem isn't necessarily going to take a psychology professional or a therapist, right? We can start doing it now. So let's start by fixing the problem of the asker. For some reason, I don't know why, we just apparently like the word fine or good or whatever, right? So if, if that's what we want to hear, let's start conversations off by saying, hi, tell me you're fine. 
Oh, okay, uh, I'm fine, now you tell me, right? <laughs> That's very weird, right? Very strange. But, and it gets to the point, but, but is that really what we want to hear? Probably not. So maybe we can go deeper. Maybe we can go deeper into our understanding and understand the question for what it really is. Broad, confusing, and misunderstood. So what can we do? Well, how about we start asking targeted questions? So questions like, what did you do today? What did you enjoy about your day? Have you thought about switching your philosophy degree? <laughs> and there, we can start engaging that person in conversation and have real dialogue with them and learn things. Or we can just say hello and move on like we probably do anyways. But we can also go further. We can ask things like follow-up questions. So, why did you enjoy that part of your day? Why did you have a good day? Are you sure you haven't thought about switching your philosophy degree? And in that way, not only show that we're interested, but challenge that person to understand how they feel and why they feel, right? I mean, it's going to feel a little strange, I know, but like, that's what emotions are supposed to do to us. So, so we talked about the problem of the asker. Now we can address the problem of the answer. So, next time someone gives you the answer of, or next time someone asks you the question, how are you, I would challenge you to respond. Do you really care to know? <laughs> or, if you're not feeling as bold as I would like you to, I'm a huge fan of being bold. Um, if you're about to give the answer of fine, stop. Think to yourself, what does it mean to feel fine? Am I actually feeling fine? Is the fact that I stayed up till 3 a.m. thinking about what I'm going to do with my future making me feel fine? And there, we can start beginning the process of understanding ourselves. So, why am I here today? Well, it's not to change the way in which you think, change the way in which you feel, talk, anything. But what I do want to try and do, and what I've attempted to do, is to stop the constant lying that we're doing to not only ourselves, but to other people, right? Fixing the problem of mental health and well-being and understanding ourselves is probably one of the hardest things that we will ever have to tackle in this generation. And what I can assure you is that lying about ourselves to others and ourselves, it's not going to be aiding in any kind of solution. And I also want to say, you're probably thinking, Damon, this is a lot easier said than done. Like, I mean, this is built in. And I agree. If I see any of you during lunch or throughout the rest of TED, I'll probably ask you how you're doing. But what I will do is uh, come back and say, no, just kidding, right? Or if you ask me, I might say tired. But then I'll come back and say, no, I'm not tired. But let me tell you about my day, right? Sound crazy. But that's what we do when we're trying to change things. But in that way, we can start dismantling this problem and creating real change towards fixing these huge, huge problems, uh, such as mental health, well-being, and understanding ourselves. So I want to leave you with a little deal. If I have to stand up here and in life, and be proud about my philosophy degree and not lie about it, then you all are certainly not allowed to lie to me or anyone else about being fine. Thank you.